looking at a Beofeng DM32 UV, which is a dual band handheld radio, uh, VHF and UHF, uh, FM and DMR. Now, I did a short video a couple of months ago um, on the DM32 UV when it first came out, um, as it was a new model. Uh, I didn't rush out and buy one of these immediately. In fact, um, I was in two minds whether to bother at all. And they, they seemed a little bit overpriced to me. A um, little bit more expensive than we're used to perhaps for the Bay of Feng radios. They've come down a little in price now and I've picked this one up. But it's got a few quirks and oddities uh, we'll look at in this video. And um, we'll compare it to um, some of Bayer Feng's earlier uh, DMR, DMR offerings. But let's just have a look at the radio itself and uh, how it comes to you from the uh, supplier. So as you can see, it looks like a, a kind of long and narrow radio. Um, we've got a, a colour screen here. We'll switch it on in a moment. Got the usual keypad. We've got up down buttons and a home and a menu button here. The contacts for the uh, charging cradle, uh, unusually and, and quite odd in my opinion, are on the front of the radio. And uh, if we turn the radio over, you'll see that the Perhaps the most useful, the most attractive point about this radio is the fact it's got USB-C charging. So you don't need a charging cradle. Just plug that into a USB-C lead and you can charge it up that way. We've got a speaker, again, oddly, on the rear of the radio. Uh, no uh, means of attaching a belt clip here. Uh, we'll come to that in, uh, in a moment. And then on the uh, side, we've got the usual um, dual uh, Kenwood style microphone and headphone socket. So that's just your, your standard, uh, same as with all the other uh, Bayer Feng radios. Um, and then on the opposite side, we've got, of course, the PTT and we've got two programmable uh, side keys. Top of the radio, we've got the channel change and volume. And we've got a, an LED for a receive and transmit indicator. No flashlight, okay, no uh, torch, not on this bay of thing. And of course, then we've got the, uh, the antenna. Now, let's put the radio back there. Obviously, you get a, a fairly detailed uh, English uh, manual with it. You get a... a Charging cradle. All you don't, as I said, you don't really need the charging cradle um, because um, you can just plug in the USB C lead. And indeed, the charging cradle itself has the USB C connector. I guess if you prefer to stand it in the cradle, that's there. You get um, a USB C lead there with a two pin, it's like a European uh, style two pin plug. Not much use in the UK, but again, it's not an issue, is it? And one of these horrible, horrible adapters. Does anyone use these? This is going to go straight into the bin. And uh, because the radio hasn't got a um, belt clip, which is the first handheld I've seen that doesn't have one, they actually uh, provide um, a sort of um, little uh, holster. I'll just... Just move the radio for a moment. We'll just have a look at this. A little uh, holster that the radio sits in, and you can clip. Uh, you can clip to a belt. Um, so if you want to sort of carry the radio um, like a traditional handheld, that's what you've got to use. So back to the radio itself. So what's special about this? Well, I've seen a lot. Or not a lot of reviews. I've seen a number of reviews that say this is a, a brilliant radio and uh, you know a game changer, all the rest of it. Um, we'll see about that. But 
and usually for a Bay of Feng radio. It has the usual system on DMR where you can load um, a number of contacts, about 150,000 contacts. You can load onto the radio, so you've got a database of call signs. But that's something I don't normally bother with because I use the Brandmeister system on DMR. And the radios that I like to use have a talker alias built into them. So I don't need a load of database of contacts. I can just use the talker alias. Now, um, any Bayofeng radio with the standard, with the stock firmware, won't have talker alias. This one does. Okay, this one has talker alias. So that's very, very useful if you're using it on Brandmeister. If you're using it on another system, you still have that facility to upload. I, I check on the number of contacts, but it's upwards of 150,000 uh, contacts you can load onto this. It's not something I, I normally have to do. Just to point out, this radio is not OpenGD77 compatible. Now, OpenGD77 is a brilliant piece of firmware that will transform, um, you know, a cheap uh, DMR radio like the um, DM1701 there into a very, very useful radio. And that, at the moment, that's kind of my main DMR radio, the 1701 running open GD77 firmware. Can't load it on this, so you're stuck with the uh, standard Bay of Feng firmware. But, like I say, it has a talker alias. And just to say the battery here, Okay, the battery's held on with a with a screw. We'll take we'll take a look at the battery uh, shortly and uh, just look at the capacity of it. Now, if you look at the screen, it's unusual in itself. We're not switched on at the moment, but if you just look at the shape of the screen, it's a portrait rather than a landscape shaped screen. We don't see the point of that. I think it's a bit of a waste of a screen, the way that's orientated. If you compare the uh, 1701 there, you'll see that the screen is, um, you know, you've got more of a landscape type display. We'll just turn the uh, radio on here. Now, we're in a fairly bright room. Okay, it's active there. There's a lot of reflections. And believe you me, this is an accurate representation of how this screen looks to the naked eye. It's got the, and this is on maximum brightness, this screen. It's got the typical uh, colour screen issues of uh, next to no visibility in bright light. It's quite bright outside, but it's, it's not like blazing sunshine. So we're in the light, in light room here. And look, we can't really see the screen, um, you know, with any ease at all. You might, you just about make it out there, look as I switch channels. Uh, it's a little bit better because the camera in itself I think is providing a bit of shading. But uh, suffice to say that this screen is very, very hard to read in bright sunlight. It's no different from most of the color screens even at maximum brightness. Much the same as this uh, DM1701 here. Again, you know, same thing. If I tilt it, we can ju just about make it out. So visibility and sunlight, well, terrible really, same as all the other screens. A lot of different facilities on this radio for, in terms of uh, adjustments. I'll just look at the menu system here and we'll look at the menu a bit more closely uh, in the next video. Um, and we'll do it in a darker room, but, um, there's ways of um, adjusting various settings, including you've got uh, quite a lot of uh, display settings we can adjust. I'll just go back there because I'm not. So we go settings, radio, let's go down to display. Uh, we can amend the uh, different font colors of the display and the um, backlight and so on okay now as i say this screen's at maximum brightness i've just maxed out the brightness and there's the display in light so an issue there okay now it always interests me because these radios 
Um, if you look at the firmware and the programming software, they really do look like they were originally designed for commercial applications rather than Armitage applications. So I can only assume that the, anybody buying these commercially is not using them outside. Um, so that's the first major criticism I've got of this. It's the same for all color screen radios, nothing different there. The other thing about this radio is I think it's, it's really very oddball. Um, let's put it side by side with what was, I thought, quite a large handheld. The TM1701 there, okay. Now you can see it's a, I'll just put them there. You can see it's quite a bit taller than the uh, DM1701, which itself is a bit bigger than handhelds I've had in the past. And um, if you look at the uh, side by side, it's actually a bit thicker uh, than the 1701. And it, to me, it's got that bump on the, the back where the battery is look. And it's quite an unwieldy shape. If you compare it to my favourite DMR radio, this is the um, DM1801 from Bayerfeng. There's quite a difference in size. Okay, I'll just zoom out a bit here. And we'll just move down. Okay, so this is this 1801 is really a traditional um bayer thing you know two meter 70 centimeter dual bander it's the kind of standard size that we've come to expect from um, from all brands of handset really pretty average size look at the difference so i don't know why we need all this bulk and all this size it's quite an odd style um it's not as nice to hold in the hand as this one and as a quick aside, you know, so much for all of your colour screens. You can see this, this this little one's still got the screen protector on. But if I turn it on, right, we've got a monochrome LCD display, perfectly visible in all lights. Okay, so a much better display. Not yeah, just fancy. to interrupt myself there, so I hope you don't mind. Um, you can see that I'm not that impressed really with the form factor of this one. It's a bit bulky and, you know, the thing about the portrait screen and all the rest of it. But just to let you know, it's just my opinion. I took this up to my local radio club the other night. And uh, about half a dozen of the guys there really liked it. And they're interested in getting one of these. So despite what I think the oddball looks are, uh, they like the build quality. You know, the uh, fact that it's a, a fairly bulky radio, they actually liked it. And uh, showed them the screen and all the rest of it. So, you know... Make up your own mind on it, but I don't know, I just, I, I can't get on with the form factor of it. Uh, the lack of um, belt clip and the screen visibility. But not everyone feels the same way, so just the right point on it. Back to the DM32. Okay, there it is. Uh, we'll just have a short look at the, I'll just take the battery off for you. and We'll take a look at that. So we've got the battery off. Um, you just see the, the label there. GM32, 7.4 volts. There's the coverage of the transceiver. Okay, you can see how the battery uh, just clips on there and it's held on by a screw. Um, let's have a look at what it says here. 2,500 milliampere hours. That's, that's not bad, is it? Should be uh, should be reasonable reasonable battery life um, on this um, charge limit eight point four made in China of course so there's your battery okay so we we'll put that back on in a moment now the specifications say this is capable of eight watts RF output now whether that's eight of those special BFN watts that's really maybe about four or five um, RF watts we'll see we'll do a power test eight watts. I think it said 8 watts on high, 4 watts on mid, and like something like half a watt or whatever on, on low power. Um, obviously, if you're using this radio at home with a hot spot, you just leave it on low power. That would be absolutely fine. Um, so, that's the initial look at the DM32UV. 
the next video I'll show you the menus, uh, the menu system on the radio. Um, we'll do that in a darker environment where we can actually see the screen. And um, I'll look at the programming software and we'll do some simple uh, programming on the radio. So the DM3832, uh, sorry, the DM32UV. Uh, first impressions, is it a game changer? I think it's quite an odd radio, to be honest. Um, and, um, we'll see how we get on with the programming and the menus in the next video. But having uh, looked at this and played around with it for a few days, um, if you want um, a decent uh, entry level uh, DMR and FM handset, this would not be the one. I would go every time with the Bayafeng uh, DM1701. Uh, and the first thing I would do with that is upgrade it to OpenGD77 firmware, which is going to make it much easier to use and program. Um, you'll have the same issue with the screen as you've got on this one. You know, basically invisible in daylight, in, in, bright, in bright daylight, bright sunlight. Um, there's not a lot you can do. I'm not sure whether there's any monochrome um, LCD display handhelds around now, uh, like the DM1801 I showed you. But uh, in most conditions, the uh, 1701 will do uh, just as well in terms of uh, screen visibility as this radio. And I prefer the layout of the screen so far. We'll see if we can do anything to change that in the menus or in the programming. So thanks for watching this initial video. We'll catch you again in the next one.